Hello, welcome again to Catfish Farm Enterprise. Now you are welcome to the Catfish Farm channel that gives you the proper guide into Catfish Farm business. For all those new in the Catfish Farm business, this is the right channel for you. We are here to give you the proper guide. So do well to hit on the subscribe button. Go through our channel. We have a lot of video, amazing videos we have done that can guide you in the Catfish Farm business. We have videos on how to produce feed yourself. We have videos on how to start, on how to feed your fishes properly. Now, like we said earlier, we have various mentoring programs we run in the Cash and Charm Enterprise. Now, our WhatsApp number is displayed on the screen. You can send us a WhatsApp message and we'll add it to our various groups. We have a guide young farmers or existing farmers on the in and out of the cash and Charm business. So, it's our pleasure to direct you as a new cash and farmer. Now, even on an existing cartridge farmer, we are also here to give you the proper guide in your adventures. So stay with us as we guide you. Now, we are back in our question and answer series. We are you take questions that a lot of persons have been asking, bothering them around the cartridge farm business. We have a lot of farmers that have various questions that have been bothering them in the cartridge farm business. So we are here to address most of those questions. So today, we are going to be taking a few questions that a lot of persons have dropped through videos or through our comment session. Also, you can feel free to send us the questions on WhatsApp. You can make use of the comment section, drop your questions, or you can do a short video to send us your questions on areas bordering you in the cash and business, and we are going to be addressing that questions in, in our question and answer series videos. So welcome back to the Cardi Charm Enterprise. So today we are taking a question that a lot of people, some persons have asked, like we said earlier. So there's a video that the person made to ask this question and we also have a comment on our YouTube channel. So just take a look at the comment. So the person asked, how can I identify a good finger leg if I want to buy? Now a lot of persons have been asking this question also. So let's watch a video on Somebody asking same question on how to identify a good blue stock. Uh, good day. My name is uh, Jeremiah Peterside. I'm doing uh, this clip somewhere in Abuja, Nigeria. Well, before I proceed, I would want to commend the initiator of this free online fish farming. Your gesture is highly commendable. Thank you so much. Uh, the question is how can I know a good fingerling or a good breed as a starter in this line of business thank you now we are looking at five things to consider when you want to buy a fingerling now there are five things to consider before you buy a fingerling or a juvenile a lot of people are asking how do I know this so let's look at the five things now the first one do not buy maybe a fingerling that has the fins or the bubbles is not to two or the fins are missing. Now these are one of the physical things you used to know that this fingerling is bad or the juvenile is bad. Look at the bubbles, maybe it's just only one or there's no fingerling at all, the fins is not there, so it's a challenge. Now also, if this maybe fish displays signs of physical weakness. Now there is physical weakness, there is injury, or the fish is bleeding. Now it's, it should not go for that. Now the third one, if they are deformed. Now you see some fishes that they are deformed, you see the growth. Don't buy that. So that's the third one. Now the fourth one, if they are less than 10 centimeters for the fingerling. Now there are some fishes, you see they are very small. Don't buy. And the last one, if the fishes are sluggish, when they are inactive, they are just there in the water struggling, don't buy. These are five, uh, five factors you should consider before you buy a fingerling or a juvenile. How to identify a good juvenile or a fingerling when you want to buy. Now also, like I said in one of our videos, go for buyers that are into hashing. Now there are a lot of persons, they just want to try out hashing. 
Now this is the first time they are hashing and they don't follow the right procedure when it comes to hashing. Now they use maybe premature brewsters or brewsters that have issues to do their hashing. Now these are persons that lack experience in hashing. Now once they hash, their fishes are not good. They will just want to sell out. So always go for marketers or persons that you know that they are into hashing as a profession. The catfishing business is broad. It has various areas. It has persons that are specialized in hashing. There are persons that are specialized in grow out. Also persons that are specialized in doing the roasting and the packaging. So these are different niche. Now go for persons that have good specialty in the hashing, in the hashery. Now go one, they have taken the precaution in hashing. They use a good brew stock. They, they, the condition in hashing was where it was met. So when you go for buyers that are just trying out their first trial, you might end up buying a bad breed. So con the five factors should be considered and also go for reliable sources in terms of purchase. Don't just see somebody online and then and person show you pictures and say, I have fishes to sell and you want to go into buying. No. Although we have good persons online that maybe sell fingerlings, sell juvenile, but this person should be trusted. You should trust that this person has good products before you buy from them. And also, there are a lot of farmers that are not trustworthy. Now, they might have fishes that they have been selling, they have been selling, they have been selling, they have sell all the fast ones. Now, the ones that have refused to grow, they will not keep it and tell yeah, these fishes are just new fishes that they want to, they will just hash them. And you, after you have bought them, you'll be training them and they will refuse to grow. So, look out for buyers that have good and reliable seed before you buy. Look out for them. You can make, you can ask for recommendations from farmers that have been in the business for a long while, where they buy from, or persons that they that they, they can recommend to you to buy. So that's why we have a mentorship program that can guide you on how to make the right purchase in terms of the fingerling or the juvenile you want to buy. Because this is a very important aspect. If you miss it at this stage, no matter the feed you give them, no matter the water management you try to employ, once these fishes are bad, it will give you a bad result. Just like somebody that is deformed, it will take a miracle for them to do well. Same as the fishes. So if you buy a deformed fish, a fish that are dwarf fish in nature, no matter how you want to train them, no matter the technique you want to employ, you might not get a good result. So I feel that I've been able to clear the question in purchase of the fingerling or the juvenile. So you do well to drop questions for us. We are here to address your questions and to reply your comments and any other need you, you can that might arise in your cartridge business. So thank you very much. Until next